Why visit the same old places when our country is packed with hidden gems? We all know the flashing lights of Las Vegas, but if you look just beyond those, you'll see our first stop, the Neon Boneyard. It's a snapshot of what was happening in the world at the time when you look at these signs. It's like a graveyard for neon, dating back to the 1950s. The sign company would come and take the sign down and put it in their storage yard, which they called the Boneyard. Kind of like a walk through the history of Sin City. Next up, to Estes Park, Colorado. Known as the base camp for Rocky Mountain National Park, it's an oasis for biking, hiking, fishing, and adventure. I cannot imagine growing up anywhere other than Estes Park that kind of fueled this passion for being in the outdoors. And it seems like fun is always in season. The town's already prepping for the Fall Elk Fest. Our third destination, Bonterre Mine, Missouri. It is the world's largest man-made lake that has been developed into scuba diving. It's the only one of its kind. Well, yeah. One of a kind. That's right. Some of the best scuba diving in the world is in landlocked Missouri. The mine closed in 1962, but now it's open year-round for those adventurous enough to take the plunge. Divers will always come here and say, man, this is a place on my bucket list. I got I to gotta make this dive. Next, north to Michigan and the St. Julian Winery. St. Julian Winery is the oldest, largest, and most awarded winery in the state of Michigan. Who knew? Michigan is the fourth largest grape growing state and the fifth in wine production. So for vino lovers, St. Julian is a must. Last up, just 70 miles west of Key West, Florida, you'll find the Dry Tortugas. When you see the fort kind of appear on the horizon, it feels like something out of like Pirates of the Caribbean. It's so cool. The most remote national park, it's a great place to camp and an even better one to snorkel. Hidden gems across America.